Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Bear with me for a moment. I have a friend who, you know, seems to have some emotional issues, right? You know, the guy, uh, to his friends, is just a happy-go-lucky guy, easy-going guy. Um, but I've hung around him enough to where I understand more clearly now than I did years ago that this guy has a photographic memory. He doesn't showcase it, right? In fact, he hides it. But when you talk with him and you mention certain facts or if you dig back, no matter how long, two months, three years, five years, ten years, this guy has really near-perfect recall, right? This is a guy who just seems to know things right now there are holes in this game I'm a better gambler than he is but let's just put it this way if there were some game show out there if there were let's say an IQ test right I wouldn't bet against him I don't care what public sentiment is right I can tell this guy has a rare talent We'll call him a ringer. Now, I believe life has ringers. There are people around all of us who you might not know are special, right? They themselves know they're special. But because their talent is such where they haven't really had to work at it, they don't really pursue it the way someone who's an overachiever would right so you have guys like James Tony historically who laid some duds down right understand in real time Tony was a guy who had some weight problems right Tony was a guy who in some fights got out box for stretches of the match the Michael Nunn fight Right? Knockouts cause amnesia, but look at that Michael Nunn fight. Tony's a guy who lost several fights along the way. But you understood that when James Tony came in the ring ready, right, there were going to be some nights where no one was going to beat James Tony. Understand, there's no analogy to anybody at middleweight today. Right. Um, I read an article about James Tony commenting on Janady Golovkin. Understand, I wouldn't expect Janady Golovkin to take on a future boxing Hall of Fame heavyweight champion like Evander Holifield and deconstruct Holifield the way James Tony did. Right. I wouldn't expect Janady Golovkin to take on a uh, Giroff and deconstruct Giroff the way James Tony did. Right? Understand James Tony might not have been an overachiever. Tony might have underachieved. But the talent level was such that you understood. You understood that Tony's talent was special. Right? That Tony was greater than the sum of his parts. That on his best nights he could be the very best. There's a film online, and it's jarring. It's so jarring that they have to tell you that Sean Porter didn't spar with this fighter until after he had sparred with several other guys. Right? He's sparring against a fighter you need to be aware of. 
This fighter is older, he's had problems outside of the ring, but like Tony, he's had moments of greatness in the ring. Right? Because he's at a lighter weight, he hasn't had the big glory that, quite frankly, his talent warranted. Right? His name is Paul Spatafora. Now understand, if you are here online and you want to see Floyd Mayweather in a real fight, what I want you to do is to Google Mayweather and Spatafora's sparring session. Understand, that sparring session had a lot of buzz in the boxing community several years ago. Well, let me just say, Spatafora sparring against Sean Porter, and I know Spatafora, like my friend, we'll go nameless here, is low-key and, you know, doesn't really talk too much about himself. When you look at his resume, you have a raised eyebrow, you say, wow, this... This guy might be a great fighter. Then you see a sparring session like this. It's so lopsided. The skills are so obvious. You know, Spatafora, I, I don't know, looks like he's, you know, showing Sean Porter how it's done. Right? I want you to look at the angles. I want you to see how Porter at one point tries to get inside. And Spatafora instantly shortens his game. Look at how he pivots in the ring. Right? The point is, just like I wouldn't bet against my friend in a game show. I don't care what the odds are, I don't care what the hype is, I don't care what the public thinks before a match. At this stage, I wouldn't bet against Paul Spatafora in any big fight in his weight. Right? That doesn't mean necessarily that I would take Spatafora over Mayweather. That doesn't mean necessarily that I would take Spatafora over Pacquiao. But what that means is I'm not taking Mayweather or Pacquiao over Spatafora. Understand this guy when he's on his game is a plus. Right? Look at the Sean Porter film. Porter has a little moment in that film. But just take a look at it. The tip off is that you understand that the video needs the explanation that Porter has been in the ring with other guys. Clearly Porter hasn't been in the ring with this guy. Let me point out too, Spatafora is a southpaw. Spatafora is doing things that for the average guy would be extremely dangerous. Right? He's bending over and he's jabbing Sean Porter's body. Right? Understand for a craftsman like him, there isn't the high risk because he's reading Porter's positioning and he understands that he can bend down and throw a jab to the body, which leaves you naked and which leaves your head in range for a counter. But he's able to do it because he knows Porter is not in position to counter him. Understand Porter is actually an excellent inside fighter. You understand that Spatafora is tight, right? Spatafora can tighten his defense, can fight small, so there's no inside for Porter to jump in on, right? Ringers are dangerous, right? Don't bet against ringers. Paul Spatafora has had problems outside the ring. Boxing is about real life, right? There's no team structure where, you know, uh, and regularity, let's say like in baseball, where you have five games and it keeps you off the street. In boxing, you're fighting once, let's say, every four months. So you're out on the street, right? You know, a lot of these guys are young and a lot of these guys are the CEO. They're the meal ticket for the people around them. 
they have much more power than, let's say, even a heralded rookie. Let's say um, Andrew Wiggins has early in his career in other sports. Spadafora has made mistakes. Spadafora is not a perfect individual. Right now, he's too old, right, for the mainstream media to take seriously. He doesn't have blinding hand speed. He certainly doesn't have big-time power, right? We can dwell on the negatives all we want. Couldn't we have said the same thing about prime James Tony? Right? Just understand there's certain guys who just have a reservoir of talent. They're the opposite of Peyton Manning. Guys like Peyton Manning are always prepared, are always ready, are always overachieving. There's a flip side to it. They're the guys with more talent who sometimes get it wrong, who sometimes aren't prepared, who sometimes, like Tony, have weight problems. But when the guy is on his A game, he can go in and he can either beat an Evander Holifield. Trust me, Holifield's never looked worse than that Tony fight. That's a masterpiece, right? Or he can, in sparring, outspar prime Floyd Mayweather and outspar prime Sean Porter, right? If Spadafora gets a title shot, I don't care what the odds are. They could be 5-1. to one, They could be 7-1. to one. You know what I say. Always go wherever your eyes take you. Right? Wherever the film takes you, that's the side you want to be on. Some of your money, even if you're hedging the play with the other guy by KO, some of your money has to be on Spadafora regardless of the odds. In my opinion, Sean Porter has never looked worse. And Porter's had tough times, right? That first Julio Diaz fight. But Sean Porter has never looked worse than this sparring session against Paul Spadafora. I've put the I've put the film in my favorites here on my YouTube channel page. It's an excellent site, too, an excellent source. It's The Boxing Voice. You need to know about The Boxing Voice. They have excellent videos here online. That should be one of your go-to sources. The point, though, is look at Paul Spadafora, how he keeps Sean Porter from coming inside. And let's just say outside, it's just a straight mismatch. Right? Um, in boxing, when you're lesser known, like Paul Spadafora, right, better known fighters who know about you don't have to be in a rush to fight you in the ring, right? And Spadafora hasn't done certain things to put himself in position to be a mandatory. But let's just say, you know, Floyd Mayweather's not rushing to fight Paul Spadafora, who he sparred with. Let's just say I never expect Sean Porter to voluntarily agree to a match against Paul Spadafora, right? Just like I would never go up against my friend in a game show contest because I understand he's just sharper than I am on things, right? So too, I believe some superstar fighters know who Paul Spadafora is and don't want to risk their reputations on him. As a gambler, you need to keep your eye on him. This guy even at an older age, is much better than most. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.